Our passage this morning is from John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, the story, as it's become known, of Doubting Thomas. And the title that I've given, what I want to say this morning, is that let our doubt be the doorway to our faith. Labels stick, don't they? I don't know what it is about humans, but we love to put people in boxes. Helps our sense of order, removes grey areas, simplifies our understanding of the world and each other if we can stick labels on people. Often the labels are totally inadequate to fully describe the breadth of personality and experience and the complexity of of somebody's situation, but it seems the world has always been programmed for sound bites and headlines rather than reality. That's why the man that Jesus healed was recorded for posterity as Simon the leper, even though he was healed. Or the redeemed disciple as Matthew the tax collector. And it's why this particular disciple has been known for the whole history of Christianity as Doubting Thomas. It seems that his ministry is understood less than his perceived failure. Isn't that always the case? His mission to India in AD 52 and his martyrdom there in AD 72 a less headline grabbing, less interesting to us than his encounter with the risen Jesus that resulted in this label of doubting Thomas. Labels are given by onlookers. They provide security for us when we think we can identify something in others that we like to think we don't carry ourselves. We can identify doubting Thomas, comfortable in the assumption that we are constantly faith-filled and would never express the sort of things that Thomas did would we? The problem with labels is they give us a false sense of security, even righteousness. And instead of separating ourselves from Thomas, we would do well to identify with him, because in that identification we learn far more than we ever do from judging him. The scripture reads this, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, One of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Perhaps instead of doubting Thomas, we should call him British Thomas, or Honest Thomas. Just taking those verses on their own, there's nothing remarkable or difficult for us to understand. He had seen Jesus killed in the most brutal fashion. Being a man of the world, though it was grievous to him, he had accepted that what had happened had happened. Jesus was dead and their world was changed forever. They just had to get used to it. Much the same conclusion that all the others had drawn, by the way. Every group of individuals has as many different personalities as there are people in it. We can only speculate as to how each saw the other, but it's entirely possible that Thomas regarded himself as a down-to-earth leveller, not given to the same overexcitement of his colleagues. It's difficult to read this account objectively without having some sympathy for his position. He didn't say, I don't believe you, you haven't seen the Lord. That would not that wouldn't have been doubt, that would have been denial. That is something quite different. But doubt allows for the possibility that what is claimed is true. It's just hesitant, slightly sceptical maybe, but it doesn't deny the possibility that what is being claimed is actually true. He took the position many of us would, if we were completely honest, show him to me and then I'll believe it. Remember, he he was the only one who wasn't with the disciples. They saw the Lord and believed already. He didn't see him and has forever been labelled as the doubter, but it was just he was the only one who wasn't there when all the rest of them saw him and got their wonderful faith together. They weren't tested the way that he was. But this story, read in its entirety, is not a story of failure, but of faith. Faith that forms a foundation for our trust in Jesus. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Doubt, it seems, is entirely natural. It's what we do with it that defines us more than the doubt itself. We might like to put Thomas in a box as a doubter. 
But if we are really honest, then rather than him being isolated and alone, we are in fact all Thomas. Jesus spoke directly to Thomas. He didn't reject him. He didn't condemn him. He offered him the opportunity to see for himself. There's no indication that Thomas actually did put his hands into Jesus' wounds. His doubt was not that deep-rooted. Perhaps his thoughts were, you had me, at peace be with you. His exclamation was, my Lord and my God. Thomas's heart was one of faith. He had no problem believing in his God. He was just struggling to process what was happening in real time in front of his eyes. How like Thomas we are. No one wants to doubt. No one wants to struggle with their faith. But if we are honest, we all do. What ultimately makes the difference is not being convinced intellectually, but coming face to face with our Lord and our God. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He can't actually have been referring directly to those present as all of their faith depended on the fact that they had all seen Jesus for themselves. They all started from a point of despair, transformed by their encounter with Jesus. What he was doing, it seems, is laying a foundation for the future when all those who follow him would do so without the opportunity that these disciples had had to believe and to trust. We are able to do so because we can read of their struggles and their emergence into living faith. Doubt is not a disease. It's a fact of life. We are not made to walk on water. It's not normal. Or to heal the sick or to worship resurrected people. This is all new and our journey towards understanding, our journey into worship and trust is going to involve doubt at almost every turn. The key is ensuring that doubt transforms into faith rather than denial. Let doubt be the doorway to our faith. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for doubt coupled with your grace which nurtures us into faith. Give us open hearts, hearts that are ready to receive you and all that you are to us. We thank you for the example of Thomas, who although he carried the label of doubt, was through faith able to carry you into the world and ultimately to lay down his life for the faith you had established in him. Help us not to be point scorers with our faith, but honest and humble ready to admit our struggles and to receive your help just as you helped Thomas. In a world full of scepticism and denial, let us be examples of hard-headed, down-to-earth, yet radical faith in you, our Lord and our God. And may we, through faith, be a people who do exploits in the 21st century. Amen.